The Truth Commission's Committee on Human Rights Violations also had hearings in the Boerland this week. It was mostly the tale of two towns, Worcester and Ashton, a tale of conflict, division and terror. Harris Sebeko is our guide. Uh, this is the river that we used to cross at the time of the state of emergency, when the police were having their roadblocks. We used to cross this river only because we don't want to get in touch with the police. This is the only entrance to Zwele Temba. At the four-way stop here, it's where the tents of the police were standing. Searching cars which are coming in and coming out, searching for weapons. We are talking now about the state of emergency from 1976 till the uplift of the, the state of emergency. This is the civic hall. We used to have our rallies, our funerals, our functions of the struggle in this hall. It's where we were having tear gas and shooting were taking place in this hall. Today, Harris Sebeku works in the ANC's regional office in Worcester. You see these stones around here? Yeah. We were using these stones as weapons because you cannot go to a gun with a knob gear. We were using these stones, throwing these stones to the police and we were hitting the target. Zwelle Temba is still not at peace. Bullet holes remain a quiet reminder of what people have had to endure. This is only to show evidence that that time it was a, a crucial time where people were living in a very, very bad condition. So in other words, that time from 1976 to 78, it was just the killing in Zwelle Temba, uh, where the youth was dying like flies. And nobody could stop the police because there were so many police for us, you know. And we started only throwing stones to them. That's all that we can do. And some of us were detained and some of us were running out of town and hiding. Some of them were going out for exiles. Some preferred to stay behind. And this week, they told the commission of torture, of killings and of the pain that is so hard to forget. He removed those electric wires from my neck and then they turned me on the other side. He opened my trousers at the back, and then they took these electric wires, put them through my anus. And they set them, inserted them deeply. Yeah. This continued for quite a long time. I can uh, cite an example. It looks like a jackhammer. Usually it, it is used for drilling the walls or to draw the concrete, to drill the concrete. But if you look at this one, you could see that it had very sharp iron points. And then they took off my trousers. Yeah. Sorry, and forget it all. Please. Please apologize me for my expression of these emotions. Then they switch on these. And then also this jackhammer was being used to torture me. I was, at the same time, I had this plastic tube which was covered over my face and even I was trying to even if I was trying to scream nobody could hear me properly when I was feeling I, f I had a nauseous feeling it looked as if my intestines were going to come out. I was certain that I was disemboweled the people were so evil you could liken them to Satan himself he shocked me with this instrument, gave me electric shocks. And he asked me no questions, he just gave me these electric shocks and then he said to me, yes, I'm going to get you, I told you I was going to get you. That was his words. When I say I've been affected psychologically, I'm not a psychiatric patient. But if you can ask any person who was detained under Section 29, he will tell you, the after effects of that anybody who was detained under that section never comes out the normal person again. Maria Muleleki had similar experiences, but she stopped being a victim. 
I want to say I'm healing somehow. Ik is gezond. Ik is oké. Ik heb de dier gegaan. Ik heb gepraat daarover. Ik heb het gevoel. Maar ik heb gezegd, ik moet kans geven aan de mensen. Laat hulle dit ook. Laat hulle, laat hulle dit met oorwin. Ik wil niet alleen gezond raken. Ik wil dat andere mensen ook met gezond raken. Ik wil het einde van die dag ons land in een gezondheid en een peace proces zien. Not far from Worcester is the town of Ashton, where most people depend on seasonal work on farms and the canning factories for a living. In the late 80s, vigilantes called Amazolomzi to control of Zulani Township. It all started when a group of parents decided that their children should be disciplined. That was not a good idea of that date name. Uh, my plan was that we must to stand. And lost the kennels that can we see where the things from the kennels are now. From the kennels that the first day clearly said, these things is nothing to do with us. They are a clay for the future. So we always must not be there, but to be there and to see what is going on. Want ons moet op die eerste dag gezien, die ding gaan slechte nies uitbring. Mishak came in en Mishak started hitting me with a stick. I was surprised en asked, what is the problem? I asked Mishak, what have I done to you? Why should you assault me in such a terrible manner? He just insulted me and said, your backside, don't you know what you've done? I was surprised. I was taken roughly and I was grabbed and shoved outside of my residence. I could see Matros that he was on the ground. Again, I was hit on the head with the Nokiri. There was also a policeman, Jonas, Palata. And they were both here. Hansen is a policeman. My wife was crying continuously. You could see that they were armed, these policemen. I couldn't balance very well, and they pushed me out of my room. I was still in my short pants. I was half naked. Kokoloi Matros beat me continuously. When I see them, more especially Meshach Jonas, I hate him a lot. Why? The reason is because of land what he did to me I can say is unacceptable. And I can also say that he's telling lies that he was not me. shooting at me. Because what he did to me was yeah. unacceptable and I dislike it at um, all. I didn't like the way the vigilance were acting against the community. They are still there in our churches. They still share the peace in our congregations with each other. And on final states, Nachmal. They're still part of our daily lives. They, they live there apparently as if those incidents never happened that they had not brutalized and brutally beaten up. I mean, they were the extension of white law and order into the black community. And they did it more effectively because they would know where to seek out. They would know who to question. They would know who to interrogate. They would know which alley you would be running down if you're running away from them um, in, the, in a way that the white person, the white policeman didn't know. So they were more brutal and more effective. And so with that kind of history and with that obvious examples of your victims there in front of you. One would really be curious for their own soul's sake to see how they understand and how they, they might have thought that they were on the winning side, you know? Or maybe they were really acting out of the most strongest of conservative values. I don't want to judge them, but I would like to hear them speak for themselves and give, a, give an account of where they were then and where they were now.